few cue cuts are essential in this understanding the body's ability to move. Onigashimasu. Welcome back to the Gojiri Karate Center. Our video today is the few cue kata series. All right, and what we'll do is we'll start off with what is generally accepted as few q kata dai itch for goju ryu practitioners and then we will go on to the few q kata dai ni kata and then few q kata dai san and these katas were taught around the world and my understanding of the history from it is that i was 1980 five years old and uh since a chinin and since a higawana um made it South African Gorgia Ryu practitioners under then the IOGKF or Saga organization learn these kata as a way for us to learn the basics of movement. Um, and it comes from a root in the uh, Okinawan schooling system and so it was used because there were so many young children doing karate in Saga or in IOGKF at that point within South Africa. So that is the origin where I learned the kata. It, it, it was my first kata uh, from when I was a child, and obviously there have been a couple of variations or tweaks, and I'll try and cover those as I run through the kata. Okay, so uh, nondescript gi, because um, I am not paying homage to anybody today in particular, but paying homage to maybe the idea of yuku kata. Or if you prefer, whichever bow works for you the yoi in front, left on top or right. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna raise up our left hand, this hand underneath. We're gonna step and turn and block a dambarai. Step through, punch oizuki, and it's chudan, the hand must be lower than the shoulder. When we turn, we're gonna prepare this hand, bring this hand across, and we're gonna turn and block. We're going to step through, punch Chudan. Prepare the hands and turn and block. Step through, Oizuki. Second, and then the third, Oizuki. Bring up the left hand, fold across the body, turn 45 degrees to the back corner, block it under eye. Step through, jaw dan uke or age uke. Turn and block 45 degrees in up, opposite corner and up age uke. Pivot, gyakuzuki, chu dan level. Step through, second gyakuzuki, step through, third gyakuzuki, step through, fourth gyakuzuki. Prepare left hand. Right hand across the body, turn, block, 45 degrees to the front corner. Step through, jaw danzuki. First jaw danzuki. Prepare, turn and block. Step through, jaw danzuki. Finish, one, two, three, and four. A lot of gedambarai a lot of oizuki, a couple of gyakuzukis, and an age uke, face block. No chudan uke. And the story behind this goes that the kata was designed to be very simple and pragmatic to allow people to learn very simple defense. Gedamburai covers the entire body from nose down to groin, and age uke basically covers from chest to above the head. And so it's got this. Now, what's important is how the hips work. So the reason we still incorporate few kata in our classes and our training are to teach mobility of the body and the hips. So I'm going to change uh, the way that I step, and I'm going to try and do a couple of variations. So one of the first things that you may notice is that some people will swing and drop, and they're trying to get this uh, simultaneous block and stance 
and the locking into the stance happening simultaneously. So you'd literally prepare your hands and as you step, turn and block, you would stop same time. All right, step through, punch, a lot of vibration. Then as you turn, there, there, I'm gonna do this twice, there is an idea that you can swing the foot around in a big circle. So you prepare before the time and then swing the foot and stop. Or you would step to the back and your hands would be prepared and the hip would turn. So there are two different ways of, of executing the change of direction. Vibration. Step, prepare, block, or swing, block, a little bit more natural. Step through, vibration, vibration, vibration. Step round to the back, turn, block, or try, swing that leg. Vibration. Swing the leg and block, or step and pivot the hip, and then heavy emphasis on the vibration, vibration, vibration. Swing the leg, block, or step, turn, block, vibration, step, block, or swing the leg, finish, from the other side, so when we're here, hip, pivot that foot, and for a lot of people doing fuku kata, this first gyakuzuki is also the first kiai. So very much generating that power. A little bit through, a little bit back, generate power. Generate power, generate power. Small details would include, if I'm doing it sideways and I move this way, this kind of compression onto this back leg. And then as I pivot and I straighten, I move my body weight ever so slightly from this back leg to the center, maybe even just onto the heel of this foot a little bit. So this is the difference between 40, well, let's call it 60, 40, 50, 50, 60, 40. The people who studied and did karate with Sensei Chinin will know that he favored 60, 40. He often would say to you, Sanjin Dutch, 60, 40, 60, 40. You'd hear it consistently in the dojo during Gashku's seminar training with him. So it's important to understand it's this idea that you're trying to learn to transfer the weight through the feet as you deliver the punch as well as, at the same time, creating that rotation off of that hip to generate that power. Very, very strong emphasis on the hikite. For some people, even an exaggerated hikite, slightly deeper back in the stance and the body twisting ever so slightly. So if I do it from this angle and I pivot, instead of finishing square up, maybe, slightly further, load, slightly further, load, slightly further, fourth time, slightly further. The emphasis being generation of straightforward power, generating power into that technique, and then when you get to a turn, it's this dynamic movement. So my chain of thought is that if you wish to learn the rudimentary turning mechanism, the first thing is just that swing step. Then what you need to do is go back to the cross step and then learn 
the, the details, intricacy of the pivot and trying to create that better turn. And then somewhere in between those two stepping mechanisms where you work towards getting the get on rye being nearly simultaneous with the body locking into its stance so you've got the shortest possible time frame. This is the ideal. Okay, so let me go through that. When you start and you learn, you're basically just gonna swing that leg and try to get it to stop at the same time, just to get the feeling. Remember, when you do cutter and you study cutter, there are two different things. Doing the cutter for the sake of showing you the excellence and the degree of polish is one skill. Studying the cutter requires you to actually mess up your cutter a little bit, to make corrections, to undergo a physiological, experiential type of change in your body as well as in your mind, and then to bring it back to that point where you're starting to produce an excellent refinement of your ability to understand your body and its ability to move. So, Fuku Kata is essential in this understanding the body's ability to move. So from the yoi, we're starting. The second type would be to prepare, have the hands up, and as you pivot, try and get the body to turn. And as you get to about this point where your body's about to lock down, the get arm is gonna go. Now, for a lot of people, there is a tendency to cut the block. And if you watch somebody who's done the kata heian or pinan kata, uh, maybe shodan or nidan, depending on which way you're gonna phrase it, Han, Shodan, or Pinan, Nidan, you will see this idea. From the shoulder, as the hip locks, drop and engagement on the block and into the stance. Now, that movement is very similar. The only controversial part for us as Gorju practitioners, because Han and Fuku are actually related in their lineage, is that Gorju practitioners favor a very circular round get done barai or get done harai uke. And so what you find is that we want to catapult the hand by turning the elbow in a small circle. So when you watch our Kirhan range of videos, you will see this kind of action. And now you've got to try and incorporate that with hip action. And that is the difficulty. So we want to work towards the idea of one, turn and drop, and that that hand has gotten there. As we come up, when you start, stop, engage all the muscles similar to sunshine, and then hip, rotation and vibration, hikite, pulling, yes, for a little bit of power, but that's not the main reason for hikite. Hikite is to grab onto something, to be quite honest. But trying to get that symmetry, and stop and focus everything at that moment. So you've got that explosiveness, chikuchi, and at the end of the chikuchi, there is that tightening. How do you know if there's chikuchi? If you slow this down, I'm gonna try to do it um, from this angle. What will happen, the punch will go out, extend through and as everything tightens, it'll withdraw, it'll pull back. All right? The point of contact that you see is this point. Your hand is effectively, if we were talking, hitting somebody, going through and coming back slightly. But it doesn't mean that this is acceptable. This is not acceptable. All right? The idea is that within the range of the arm and the hip, and the tightening, you're gonna get the idea of, now, I don't know if Sensei Zoe's gonna be able to do this in slow-mo, so I'm gonna do that technique a couple of times and hopefully we'll be able to see it. So if I'm going from the Gedambarai, any of the Gedambarai's in the kata, and I'm stepping through, trying to get that idea of the hand going out and back and hopefully from the side profile we'll be able to see it. Let's do that one more time. Let's see if, I hope we can capture it. Hopefully there is that, just that little bit extra 
that you feel arm going, the hips driving the punch. All right, now, this may be a little bit different to what your sensei says. And maybe your school doesn't do this particular kata. So you might be in the Gorgia framework. You may be in a school or a federation that doesn't do this kata. These ideas are ideas on power generation. And to be quite honest, not all senseis want power generation the same way. Some senseis do not want to see this wind up release kind of mechanism because they're going, this is not Gorju, this is maybe Shotokan. But the reality of combat is that this is a Kehon cutter, a foundation cutter. And if you are to understand generation of power, you have to understand multiple generation systems, such as centrifugal force, where you are swinging the body and stopping simultaneously, such as maybe as a punch vibration, or as I pivot, load, back, forward, back, forward, wind up, release. So you're seeing at least three different power systems in Fuku Kata Daiichi. So this is what makes this Kata very, very special and gives it a very unique flavor. Now, depending on your school, you will adjust according to what your sensei says. That's very important. You adjust the cut according to your school. But if you are going to do the cutter for display, for grading, remember that's one type of cutter. If you are going to enter the cutter and use it for training, then you are going to break with the tradition of the cutter and you're going to explore the range and extent of your body's ability to move because it varies from person to person. I have a gentleman who has now joined my dojo who's roughly the same age as me, has back issues and has very tight hips. When he kind of stands in Sanjin Dutch, it kind of looks like this at the moment. And that is because he's at the beginning of his journey. His body is not flexible and mobile for somebody who's approaching 50. So we have to nurture that student differently to somebody who grew up in the dojo from five years, is now 35, 40 years old, has a different body ability. And then that's very different from when you're 20 years old. Your body is like an elastic band. It can do amazing things, especially if you've been training a long time and doing enough stretching and flexibility work, as well as doing enough power work. So it varies. Every single person is different, and you have to adjust accordingly. The most important thing is you as a student are expected to learn something, go home, and practice it. And in that practice phase, you are going to have that trial and error learning for yourself. You're going to get kept within the parameters every time you come back to the dojo and train at the dojo. Every time sensei gives you corrections, that is setting the parameters, how the kata ought to look for sensei. And then gradually you will streamline to the way the school requires it to be done. And this is the educational approach that most people don't necessarily understand. So Fuku kata, very, very rudimentary kata, origins, shorin, shorinji ryu, kind of line coming out round about the 1920s, 1930s, some would say, and fitting in with the idea of a new curriculum in the school system to help replace the Okinawan cutters of Pinan, or as they are called in Japan, Heian cutters, and to bring in two new cutters. The Goju practitioners at the same time created Geksai Daiichi, or what in some schools of Okinawan Shorinryu or Shorinjiryu might call Fuku Kata Daini. And the telltale sign on whether or not they are, besides for announcing the kata that they're doing Fuku Kata Daini, typically would be that at the point where most Goju practitioners deliver Gyakuzuki without a shift, our cousins from Shorinryu and Shorinjiryu slide up and then move on, on with the kata. And their kata is called Fuku Kata Daini, but we call that Geksai Dai Ich, and then we have Geksai Dai Ni afterwards. So, for a Goju practitioner, what is Fuku Kata Dai Ni? 
And simply, it is the exact same cutter template as fuqcutter.h, but instead of doing a step through at every point that you would step, you are going to do a maigeri and put the foot in the appropriate stance. So, I bow, I yoy, depending on how you choose to do it, I'm gonna to move to the get umbrai. When I move to the next position, maigeri, down, oizuki. Turn and block, all turns are the same. Maigeri, oizuki. Turn and block, maigeri, oizuki. Maigeri, oizuki. Maigeri, oizuki. Turn, block, maigeri, ageuke. Turn, block, maigeri, ageuke. Pivot, punch. Maigeri, gyakuzuki. Maigeri, gyakuzuki. Maigeri, gyakuzuki. Turn, block. Maigeri, jodanzuki. Turn, block. Maigeri, jodanzuki. One, two, three, and four. All right. So, I'm going to do the cuts the other way, hopefully at the same speed. And hopefully, since it's Zoe, we'll be able to split the screen and have me doing the kata, both from the front and the back, same time. So over the course of time, uh, two kiais. The first way I learned the kiai was a gyakuzuki at the back, first one, and the last jordan oizuki before ending the kata. For a short period of time in my karate career, it became kiai to the jordanzuki this side and kian to the jordanzuki on this side. So. Those are the two variations on the kiai points. Okay, the kata can have a very static transition. In other words, if I move from here, my feet are tethered. This foot is now tethered to the floor and this, or a slightly more advanced version, if you wanna think of it that way, where this foot is now tethered to the floor after the turn and I kick and I shift up and then punch. Now the shifting version where I shift with every step, that is another power system. So you might find that it works nicely to practice Fuku Kata with the three power systems it generally has, centrifugal, vibration, wind up release. And when you do fuku kata dai ni, you start adding in centrifugal on all the turns and then shift forward, momentum, slamming into your opponent with suriyash and yuriyash movement, in other words, front back foot sliding, and then the power delivery, which is essentially vibration thereafter. But you're getting that added weight of your body shifting forward. Right, and that adds another scope to your exploration of the few Q cutter sequences. So we're gonna call it our first video, few Q cutter dai itch and few Q cutter dai ni. For the next video, I will do few Q cutter dai sun. I'll try break it down. The few Q cutter dai sun as taught by Sensei Chinin is very, very special because it considers a whole lot 
of different power systems. I did forget one power system now doing Fuku Katsudaini, and that is trying to generate power by stepping down and activating the hip as I step down. So I step down and activate the hip for that power. And you can have a look at that as another idea. Okay, so Fuku Kata, a tribute to the ideas and the teachings under a chapter on the Gorjuru Karate Center we, uh, YouTube channel um, dedicated towards Sensei Terry Ochinen because I spent more time doing these cutters with him than anybody else. I was absolutely delighted the first time I went to Kikagawa Sensei's dojo in uh, Okinawa and the seniors class that was training before the uh, students, foreign students were allowed to train did a demonstration of kata and they did fuku kata and my heart just sang so like wow that's it's still here in Okinawa it's still alive in an OGKK dojo and I was like yes this is the place for me because some of the teachings I've grown up with are still being preserved there not part of the formal curriculum part of the informal curriculum within a dojo please remember nearly every dojo around the world. There is the formal curriculum, there is the informal curriculum. If the dojo only has the formal curriculum, you're missing out. Hey, arigato gozaimasu. Thank you very much for joining us at the Gorjuru Karate Center. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment. Um, if this wasn't your cup of tea, it's okay. I understand, as I said, this is very much tribute to my origins and my roots. And big shout out to Sensei Herbert Allen, uh, Wayne Curry, and people of Jindakan International um, who are still keeping the ideas of Sensei Terry Ochinen alive. Um, I have a lot of time and respect for my uh, Gorjuru routing that went that way, and I'm super grateful. And to somebody who was my dojo sensei for many years, Sensei Aubrey Peterson, who kind of still keeps Sensei Terry Ochinen's ideas alive in his private training and his private tuition. Hi, sayonara. Cheers.